let us look at the special case 2 what is the special case 2 in routh rv stability criteria now so in this case if at all if you have one row with all zero elements we already seen special case 1 if the first element is zero all the elements are non zeros then you can replace zero with epsilon we can proceed so in the special case 2 if any row contains all zero element then how to proceed uh, further uh, to form the routh array and how to investigate the stability of the system which is a special case 2 now so uh, if any row contains all the elements zero which indicates that there are roots of the characteristic equation which lie symmetrically opposite each other around the origin and the, they are either symmetrical about the uh, real axis or they are symmetrical about the imaginary axis so which indicates that uh, poles there is a chance of the poles which are lying on imaginary axis the problems which we have seen only left of the s-plane pole and right of the s-plane so whenever there is a row which contains all zeros means there is a possibility of having imaginary axis poles now how to proceed to proceed further we need to form auxiliary equation what do you mean by auxiliary equation so axillary equation can be formed from the coefficients of the row which contain all zero elements just above the row. So we have to take the row above the row which contains all zeros. Therefore, if I have s power 4 row all zero elements, we should take the above just row s power 5 row coefficients. With the coefficients, we can form the equation. That equation is called axillary equation. Now, what is the importance of the axillary equation? Once you form the axillary equation, you find the first derivative of the axillary equation. If the axillary equation is a of s, then your first derivative will be a, dA by dS is equal to 0. Now, what are the coefficients of dA by dA is equal to 0? Those coefficients are to be replaced in the place of zero elements. Now, there are no zero elements here. The zero elements are replaced with the coefficients of dA by dS equal to 0 where A is the axillary equation which is formed from the row just above the row which contains all zero elements. Now, so we can proceed further. So once you, once you fill the routes array, if you want to know the stability of the system, we know we can look at the what is the first column element uh, sign. If the, all the signs are positive, then we would say that the system is stable because uh, there are no sign changes. But before going to that, we need to look at what are the poles or what are the roots of the characteristic equation which are lying on the imaginary axis. To find those roots, take the axillary equation and solve the axillary equation. Because the axillary equation is a part of the characteristic equation whatever the roots that you are getting the axillary equation are also the roots of the characteristic equation. So these roots will have imaginary axis roots. So we, we can find out what are the imaginary axis roots. If those imaginary axis roots are non-repeated, then the system is marginally stable system provided if you don't have any sign changes. If there are sign changes, a yes, system is directly unstable. If there are no sign changes, again we can look at what are the roots that are on the imaginary axis or what are the poles lying on the imaginary axis. If those poles are repeated, again we can say the system is unstable. If those roots or those poles are non-repeated, we say system is marginally stable and will have continuous oscillations. Routh stability with a special case 2 that is whenever a row contains all zero elements then how to proceed and how to fill the routh array so to understand that let us illustrate with this example now look at this example so the example is like this consider the characteristic equation s power 6 2 s power 5 8 s power 4 plus 12 s cube plus 20 s square plus 16 s plus 16 is equal to 0 find number of 
roots of the characteristic equation having first part of it positive real part negative real part zero real part and also find stability of the system now so in this problem we have a sixth order equation that means there are six roots in the characteristic equation or there are six closed loop poles in the system so depending upon the location of the poles then we will have the stability so you know how to find the stability depending upon the location now this routes are which criteria will give us how many poles that are there in the right of the s plane left of the s plane as well as the imaginary axis so we know that Uh, the roots of the characteristic equation are nothing but closed loop poles so here it is uh, it is asked that how many roots of the characteristic equation having positive real part which means how many closed loop poles are lying in right of the s plane and the second one is uh, how many roots of the characteristic equations are lying in left of the s plane which means having a negative real part and third is zero real part which means imaginary axis poles so the characteristic equation is available to us now what i can do is we can uh, uh, form the routh array let us see how to form the routh array so we have a number of rows here and i start with s power 6 s power 6 s power 5 and so on up to s power 0 then uh, similarly uh, we need to enter the elements into the first two rows using the constant or coefficients of the characteristic equation so if you enter the first element is 1 the second is 2 then 8 12 we have 20 16 and 16 so these are the elements of first two rows s power 6 as well as s power 5 now we know how to calculate the elements of the row s power 4 then if you look at s power 4 if this element if i called as a b1 as we have seen the example so where b1 is equal to so actually we write it as 2 into 8 minus 12 into 1 divided by 2 or else directly we can write it as your b1 is equal to i have 8 so 8 minus 12 into 1 by 2 so both are same because when you take when you multiply these two again divide by 2 you will be getting the same element 8 so so 8 minus 12 into 1 by 2 so this gives us a b1 is equal to 2 so we can also calculate b2 then if we calculate b2 so we should take uh, 40 minus 16 divided by 2 so that will be uh, your b2 is 12 similarly you can calculate uh, b3 also so it is going to be 16 so you need not calculate b3 as i said you can directly take it from the uh, the first uh, row last element so it can be carry forward here as a b3 element 16 then when you go to the next step the next row s cube row so when you take the s cube row we call it as a c1 c2 c3 and so on let us how to calculate c1 we know that you just look at the elements of just above two rows then your c1 is going to be it is very clear so we have 2 into 12 minus 12 into 2 divided by 2 that is going to be zero the first element is zero similar i can find out c2 also so we have a 2 into 16 minus 16 into 2 divided by 2 that is also zero so we have two zeros and this is also zero now this is what the special case 2 what is that i have one row with all zero elements what is special case 1 in special case 1 there will be only uh, first element zero all other elements are non zeros so if you have all other element non zeros except the first element which is zero then i can replace zero with epsilon and i can proceed where epsilon is a small positive number 